In this video, I will describe how to solve the calculus problems known as related rates problems. In this video, I will first discuss what related rates problems actually are. And then I will tell you five steps that can be used to solve virtually any related rate problem. And finally, we will apply those five steps in an example problem. If you want to skip right to the problem, you can move to the 315 mark of this video. Let's begin. Before we talk about how to solve a related rates problem, let's talk about what a related rate problem actually is. Well, it's a problem in which you're trying to find some rate of change when you are given another rate of change that is, well, related to that. Calculus will be required to solve these problems, specifically differential calculus. We will be taking a derivative with respect to time to solve related rates problems. In an example that we'll do in a minute, we'll talk about a rocket that's being launched. And if you know the rate at which the rocket is rising, you'll be able to use calculus to figure out the rate, the related rate, at which the rocket is moving away from an observer. I will now describe five steps that can be used to solve virtually any related rates problem. Following this, we will apply each of these five steps in an example. The first step is to draw a diagram. Often when you're presented with a problem, you'll be also given a diagram, but if not, I think you will find it very useful to draw a diagram yourself, especially because step two is to then label all quantities and their rates of change in the diagram. You should be labeling all lengths of sides or measures of angles if, if they are related to the problem, as well as this rate at which each side is changing. In an example that will follow these five steps, we'll talk about a rocket launching, and we will label the side that represents the rocket's distance from the ground with the rate at which the rocket is moving away from the ground. We'll then relate all of these quantities in the same equation. If you're talking about a situation that can be modeled with a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem could sometimes work. If you're talking about a circle and its area, the area formula for a circle would be applied. But you just have to think of an equation that can relate all quantities in the problem. And then that equation will be differentiated with respect to time. You will differentiate that equation with respect to time. That equation will then be used, the derivative with respect to time, that will then be used to answer the question. And depending on the context and the situation, it will be, you'll, you will use that derivative in a little bit of a different way in each problem, but that's what you will use to answer the question. Now that you know what a related rates problem actually is, and five steps that you can use to solve a related rates problem, let's do an example problem. Say you were observing a rocket launch from an observation post 5,000 meters from the launch pad. When the rocket reaches an altitude of 10,000 meters, it is traveling at a rate of exactly 200 meters per second. And the question is, how fast is the rocket moving away from you at this exact moment? We will now apply the five steps that we discussed earlier to solve this problem. Step one in the process of solving this related race problem is to draw a diagram. Oftentimes, you'll be given a diagram, but if not, it's very important to draw one yourself. I'm gonna take this sentence by sentence. The first sentence says that you're observing a rocket launch from an observation post 5,000 meters away from a launch pad. So let's say that this is you, and here is the launch pad. Well, I'm gonna let this square represent the launch pad. It then says that the rocket is 10,000 meters in the air and it's traveling at a certain rate of speed. And the question is, at what rate is the rocket moving away from you? The dotted line in this diagram represents the path that the rocket is traveling away from you. Now your diagram certainly doesn't have to be as, as nice as this one that's drawn with the clip art. It could be as simple as making, making a line, labeling where you are, where the launch pad is, and then uh, a vertical line, which describes the path of the rocket. And then another diagonal line, which represents the distance the rocket is from you. 
at the point in time described in the problem. Once you have a diagram drawn, the second step is then to label all quantities, all sides of this right triangle in this problem, as well as the rate of change of each side. I'm going to label the three sides A, B, and C, and then I'm going to take a look at each side individually and describe the length of each side as well as the rate of change of each side. Let's start with side A. The problem says that your observation point for this from the launch pad, the, op the distance between your observation point and the launch pad is 5,000 meters. So side A is 5,000. The rate of change of side A, which I'm describing as dA over dt, which is the rate of change of side A with respect to time, which I'm going to abbreviate A prime, the rate at which this side is changing is zero. That is to say, the distance between the observation point and the launch pad does not change. Think about this rocket moving up from the ground. After the rocket takes off and it moves up towards the sky, the distance in which you are standing from the launch pad does not change. As time is passing, that's still 5,000 meters. So A prime is equal to zero. The, the rate of change of side A with respect to time is zero. That's not the case with side B. Let's think about side B. Well, the problem says that at this exact moment in time, the rocket is at an altitude, a distance above the ground, of 10,000 meters. Side B is 10,000. It also tells you the rate of change of side B. It says the rocket is moving at 200 meters per second. That means that that side B, at this exact instant, is changing at a rate of 200 meters per second. The rate of change of side B with respect to time, B prime, is 200 meters per second. Side C. Side C, the hypotenuse of this triangle, represents the distance you are from the rocket. And the question is, how fast is the rocket moving away from you? Well, the distance between you and the rocket is side C. The rate at which it's moving away from you is what you're trying to find in this problem. So the rate of change of side C is the question. Which we'll have to figure out the rate of change of side C. It does not give us the exact length of side C at this instant. However, because this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to figure out the length of side C at this moment. Side A is 5,000. Side B is 10,000. And if we add together the squares of those two sides, that will tell us the square of side C. You can then take the square root of both sides, and that turns out to be in simplest form, 5,000 times the square root of 5 meters. So although it was not explicitly given in the problem, you can apply the Pythagorean theorem to find that the length of side C is 5,000 root 5. Now that we know the lengths of all the sides in this diagram, as well as their rates of change, except for side C's rate of change, which is what we will find to solve this problem, we can move on to step three. In step three, relate all quantities in the same equation, there's not actually a lot of work to be done. This is a step that you have to think about and it will be different in every problem. But what we're going to do is we're gonna think about all three, in this case it's a right triangle, all three of these sides. How could we relate all three of these sides in a single equation? Well, I already alluded to a single equation which relates all three sides in the previous step as being the Pythagorean theorem. And that will work for this step three. All quantities can be described in the single equation of the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared will relate side A, B, and C. Once you have all of the quantities related in a single equation, this is where the calculus comes in. We'll now differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to time. This is going to require implicit differentiation because we're differentiating with respect to time. So the derivative of a squared is 2a, but because I'm differentiating with respect to time, I have to multiply by a factor of 
the derivative of a with respect to time. Likewise, the derivative of b squared is 2b times the derivative of b with respect to time. And that's equal to the derivative of the other side of the equation, 2c, times the derivative of c with respect to time. Now I'm going to abbreviate the derivative of a with respect to time as a prime. I will abbreviate the derivative of b with respect to time as b prime and the derivative of c with respect to time as c prime. You will often see a, a derivative abbreviated in this way. Once you differentiate with respect to time, the equation that related all of the quantities in the problem, you then use that derivative to answer the question. Way back in step two, we identified all of the lengths of the sides in our right triangle diagram, as well as the rates of change of all of those sides. And at this point, we can simply substitute those into the derivative to answer the question. We're trying to find the value of C prime, so we're going to substitute all of our values and then solve for C prime. Let's begin the substitutions. The first term in the derivative is 2a times a prime. 2a times a prime would be 2 times 5,000 times a prime, which is 0. Remember, the rate of change of side a was not changing. The rate of change of side a was 0. The second term in the derivative is 2b times b prime. b was 10,000, and b prime is 200. And that's equal to 2c times c prime. c, the hypotenuse in our diagram, is 5,000 root 5, and c prime is what we're trying to find. So we're going to solve this equation for c prime. The first term, 2 times 5,000 times 0, is 0, so I don't have to worry about that term. The second term on the left side of the equation, 2 times 10,000 times 200, that has a product of 4 million. And on the right side of the equation, 2 times 5,000 times the square root of 5, can be described as 10,000 root 5 times c prime. To solve for c prime, we'll divide both sides of the equation by 10,000 root 5. So 4,000 divided by 10,000 root 5 results in, after putting it in lowest terms, 400 over the square root of 5. And that's the value of c prime, 400 over the square root of, of 5. Now, if you want to describe the rate of change of side C, which is the rate at which that rocket is traveling away from you at that exact moment, if you want to leave your answer in an exact form, I would rationalize 400 over the square root of 5. And if you rationalize that by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of 5, that would result in 400 times the square root of 5 over 5, which can simplify to 80 root 5 meters per second. That is the exact rate at which the rocket is moving away from you at the instant described in the problem. This is approximately equal to 178.9 meters per second. So depending on the context of the problem and how accurate you need to be, you could describe that rate of change of side C in our diagram, the exact rate of change that that rocket is moving away from you as 80 times the square root of 5 meters per second, or 178.9 meters per second.